Heracles has just delivered the apples of the Hesperides to King Eurystheus. Eurystheus was ordered to give them up to his priestesses, and is enraged once more by the unstoppable successes of Heracles. He opens his lips ready to deliver his final labour upon the mighty son of Zeus. In the depths of the underworld is a particularly dangerous creature. This beast is yet another child of the gods Typhon and Echidna and an abomination of beauty. With three heads, a dragon's tail, and snakes across its body, it stands as god in the darkened kingdom of Hades. Eurystheus looks to Heracles with a crooked smile and demands that he bring forth the hellhound Cerberus. Cerberus is a protector of the underworld. He prevents the dead from leaving their eternal fate and the living from meddling with them. Heracles has already slayed many of Cerberus's kin, including the Hydra, Orthrus, and Laden. Orthrus was even the father of the Nemean lion, whose iron pelt Heracles wears. With so much experience taking on this monstrous family, Heracles is quite confident in his ability to subdue Cerberus. Our hero considers the challenge ahead of him, and straight away recognises where its difficulty actually lies. Cerberus is a favoured pet to the Lord of the Underworld, Hades. Hades' resistance to any action against Cerberus would greatly complicate matters and ruin the chances of success. Heracles is smarter than he looks when it comes to the gods. He goes to Eleusis near Athens and takes part in a local rite of passage known as the Eleusian Mysteries. The context of what the Eleusian Mysteries are is quite important, so we'll just step away from Heracles for a second to explain these. In ancient Greek mythology, Hades is married to the goddess Persephone. Persephone is the daughter of Demeter, goddess of agriculture, and she represents the vegetation of the earth. The tale of Persephone and Hades' marriage starts with obsession, where Hades lusted and infatuated over Persephone. Zeus, knowing Demeter would refuse such a marriage, permits Hades to kidnap Persephone and take her into the underworld. Demeter searches everywhere for her missing daughter, and she neglects her duties to tend the earth at the same time. After some months, Helios, the all-seeing sun god, finally tells Demeter where Persephone is being held. The months without tended land have driven the mortals into cries of starvation. This, mixed with Demeter's incessant petitions, makes Zeus force Hades to return Persephone. Hermes goes to the underworld to collect Persephone. But just before that happens, Hades tricks his bride into eating some pomegranate seeds. The fates had previously decreed that any god who eats food in the underworld is destined to spend eternity there. The act of consuming the seeds henceforth obliges Persephone to spend one half of each year in the underworld. Every year, as Persephone is taken to be queen of the underworld, Demeter is saddened. This sadness makes her neglect the earth again, and creates the autumn and winter seasons. When Persephone returns, Demeter becomes happy again, and a fruitful spring blooms into a beautiful summer. The Eleusian Mysteries were a ceremonial set of traditions that revolved around this seasonal tale of Persephone. They were split into two, the Lesser and Greater Mysteries, with the Lesser performed a full year before the Greater. Unfortunately for us, the most important rites themselves during the Greater Mysteries were highly secret. Initiates took an oath of secrecy, and nothing of the ceremonies were ever written down. We can only gauge bare hints about what the rites might have actually entailed. What can be gleaned is that there was something revealed, something performed, and something recited. 
Heracles hopes that by being initiated into these mysteries, that Persephone will take favour with him and help to convince Hades to permit the removal of Cerberus. Heracles goes to the most southern tip of all of Greece, Cape Tynaron. At this place, there is a deep cave that supposedly leads to one of the pathways into the underworld. It is a dark climb downwards, but our hero is kindly aided by two reliable figures. First, Athena comes to him briefly, as she sometimes does, as a calming presence to ease his nerves. Next appears Hermes, the god of trade, who is also one of the many guides to deceased souls. Heracles and Hermes reach the shores of the river Styx and encounter the ferryman, Charon. Charon tries to stop the son of Zeus, but quickly realises he is not a fitting match for the angry and mighty hero. He ends up ferrying the pair without his usual payment of one coin, without another question asked. Heracles lands on the other shore of the Styx and makes his way towards the throne of the underworld. Many of the souls around him flee from his presence, but a few find their courage to remain and watch his approach. The first spirit our hero encounters is the Gorgon Medusa. Heracles readies himself to fight the monster, but Hermes interjects by stating that these phantasms are very little danger to the living. Next, Heracles bumps into an old friend, Meliaga, and they gossip for a while before Heracles agrees to marry the spirit's sister in the living world. Near the entrance to the underworld, Heracles happens across Theseus, Pyrithus, and Ascalaphus. Theseus and Pyrithus are imprisoned in stone for stealing away children of the gods as brides. Heracles frees Theseus, but when he tries to do the same for Pyrithus, the earth shakes beneath him. Pyrithus had sought to steal away Persephone herself, and Hades cannot forgive such a terrible slight. The third prisoner, Ascalaphas, is lodged beneath a heavy boulder placed on him by Demeter. This man was the messenger that first spoke of Persephone eating pomegranate seeds in the underworld. To give a drink to the freed captives, even just a drink of blood, Heracles slaughters one of Hades' cattle. The butchering of the animal calls forth Hades' herdsman, Menoetes. We last saw Menoetes when he informed Geryon that Heracles was trying to steal his cattle. Menoetes challenges our hero to a contest of strength. Heracles lifts the herdsman high in the air and crushes his ribs. However, before he can kill Menoetes, he is suddenly petitioned to stop by Persephone. Heracles drops the herdsman and turns around to see Persephone standing nearby. Persephone greets Heracles like a brother and thanks him for his devotion for taking part in the Eleusian Mysteries. Hades then comes to his wife's side, equally pleased with Heracles. The son of Zeus asks to take Cerberus out of the underworld. Hades looks upon his nephew and states that if Heracles is able to take away the beast without using his club or arrows, he is free to do so. Cerberus is found chained up near the river Acheron, snarling and barking. Heracles straight away moves in to grapple with the three-headed monster. Cerberus lashes out from every side, and serpents strike from the beast's back. Heracles wrestles with the powerful, ravenous jaws of Cerberus, one by one bringing them under his control. With all of his strength, he squeezes each of Cerberus's necks at the same time, until he chokes the animal into submission. Athena assists our hero with recrossing the river Styx back to the realm of the living. Heracles has chained the great beast with adamantine bonds and half drags, half carries his prize out of the dark. He walks Cerberus across the lands he has travelled, all the way back to Tyrants. It is said that as Cerberus resists the bright sunlight of day, his slaver gives birth to the poisonous plant Aconite and other dangerous herbs. 
Heracles walks through the gates of Tyrans and displays Cerberus for all to see. King Eurystheus is in the process of conducting a sacrifice to Hera. He turns and witnesses the horror spawn of Typhon. Eurystheus is terrified and he leaps back into the protective jar that he fashioned all those years ago. From this position of deference, he begs that Heracles return Cerberus back to its hellish domain. He promises loudly and in front of the court that in return he will finally free Heracles from his service. Heracles looks upon the king of tyrants, hiding in his pitiful jar. He smiles at the cowardly king that was unable to best him for the better part of twelve years. He lifts Cerberus once more upon his mighty shoulders and leaves the quivering court behind. Heracles' labours are complete, and in the eyes of the gods he has finally made amends for the murder of his family. That's it, thanks for watching this series. We're sadly at the end of our 12 labours, but as always, there's still plenty to check out on our channel and plenty more we'll be putting out in the future. Thanks for continuing to support us here at Aspect History. I've been Circle Strafe, I'll see you next time. Toodles!